Clark yeah. closed on top M. Councilman Blend? Yes, I approve it. Councilman Marcellus? No questions on it. Councilman B Garvin? No questions, sir. Vice Mayor? No, sir. Okay, anyone wishes to work on a no? Hearing none, motion pass. Um, no. Now going back to tab L. G. Oh. I or J? Or J. The good son. I. Which one, man? Um, we, what, what, what's the letter that come after H? I. H I. 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 Tab I. I. You skip kindergarten, Mr. Mayor, go straight to law school. In honest in ordinance of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami, Florida, amended in chapter 29 of the city of North Miami Code of Ordinances, entitled Land Development Regulations by amending Article 5, Division 15, entitled Signs, specifically at Section 5-1501, entitled Purpose, Section 5-1502, entitled Prohibited Signs, Section 5-1503, entitled General Standards, Section 5-1504, entitled Signs Permitted Without a Permit, Section 5-1505 entitled Permitted Signs Requiring Development Review and Section 5-1506 entitled Comprehensive Sign Program to allow electronic message centers and electronic scrolling light signs in all non-residential zoning districts and to establish development standards and guidelines for such signs in order to encourage and facilitate economic growth in a manner consistent with the intent of the comprehensive plan of the city of North Miami, providing for conflicts, severability, codification, and an effective date. Okay, this is the second reading. I got a motion. Motion to approve. Motion second. To approve. Has been seconded. Um, public hearing is open on top I. Anyone wishes to be heard on top I. Uh, public hearing now closed on top I. Councilman Blend. Approve it. Okay. Councilman Marcellus. Yes, more of it. Councilman Garvin. No questions. Vice Mayor. No question. Okay, Mr. City Clerk Wokal. Councilman Garvin. Yes. Mayor Pierre. Yes. Councilman Marcellus. Yes. Councilman Blend. Yes. And Vice Mayor Steril. Yes. Measure passes 5 0. Thank you. Top J. In ordinance of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami, Florida, amending the charter of the city of North Miami pursuant to sections 166.021 and 166.031 Florida statutes and section 6.03 Mi Miami-Dade County Code of Ordinances and in accordance with the comprehensive review and recommendations of the city of North Miami Charter Review Board to update and clarify sections of the city charter by providing non-substantive stylistic and organizational changes, including statutory references, consistent usage of names, terms, and references, gender diversity, and four corrections of Shriveners, errors, and redundant language, providing for conflicts, severability, codification, and an effective date. Second reading of top J. Move approval. Has been moved. I'll second that. Anyone wishes to be heard on top J? Hearing none, Mr. I mean, Councilman Blend. Okay. Councilman Marcellus. No questions. Councilman Gavin. No questions. Vice Mayor. No, sir. Okay, Mr. City Clerk. Mayor Pierre. Yes. Councilman Marcellus. Yes. Councilman Blend. Yes. Vice Mayor Steril. Yes. And Councilman Gavin. Yes. Measure passes 5 0. Okay, top L. Proposed resolution adopting the updated City of North Miami Stormwater Management Master Plan. Move approval. Okay, has been moved. Second. Has been seconded. Um, anyone wishes to be heard on top L? What's happening What's tonight? Going on right now? <laughs> 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 no, they're waiting for it. Don't worry, they're oh. coming up. Oh, they're waiting for top N. I mean, that's right. No one want to talk about top L. <laughs> No. <laughs> Public hearing is still open on top L. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, motion was made, was seconded. Um, Councilman Blend. <laughs> move it. Councilman Marcellus. Just move it. Councilman Gavin. No questions. Vice Mayor. No, sir. Okay. Anyone wishes to work it or no? Hearing none. Mm -hmm. Item passed. Thank you, Mr. Valage. I'm doing, I'm right on time. <laughs> Tap N. 
Discussion regarding $2.5 million from Biscayne Landing to be allocated for the purchase of police vehicles and repairs and improvements in City Hall and the City Library. Okay. Um, discussion. Um, before I move into discussion, just, um, you know, I'm going to open public hearing on top end and hearing from the public to see exactly how the $2.5 million should be split between, I guess, the police cars repaired to an improvement to City Hall and the City Library. Those of you that may not be aware of that $2.5 million initially, maybe a couple months ago, uh, $2.5 million was taken away from the Biscayne Lending money to be uh, spent on police cars repaired to City Hall and City Library and I think there was an issue of social services uh, that was said so these are the items that was allocated for that 2.5 million dollars um, the City Council may have documents you know in their possession that you may not have but those documents were available at the last uh, time that we had discussion regarding Biscayne Landing. Uh, basically, we had um, a request from the North Miami Police Department requesting about $2.6 million uh, to replace you know, their cars, the fleet. We heard from the members of the public that those cars are running on last legs, and a lot of them have been you know, stop on the roads. I mean, you could imagine you know, if you were Officer Fernandez going out there chasing um you know a subject then for the police car to just you know stop on the road so uh, the request was 2.5 million dollars so i don't know why only 2.5 million the request was 2.6 million dollars but the politicians decided that they want to put 2.5 million dollars to do everything else that we just mentioned uh there was a request to do city hall uh improvement to city hall um i, I don't know if you guys have seen what's happening at city hall uh, a lot of times when we got event here, the air conditioner is not working well. Sometimes, you know, um, you heard from Mr. Ghani, the public works director, although this is what they call uh, an emergency center, uh, but we're not even federally certified to even have emergency in this building here. I'm not sure if I'm using the word properly, but basically the federal government says that this is not the place that we should be having our emergencies when the place can actually be flooded. In fact, I've been down at, you know, in the basement. I have seen water many times in the past. Um, somehow public works will come in and clear out the water, but this place needs serious improvement. But what do I know? I mean, just like with the water plant, I mean, that place needed improvement a long time ago. But, you know, we have a five-year capital improvement, but the politicians sometimes, you know, decided to do something else rather than um, spend the money where it's badly needed. And I think the, the request for the CO2 wall improvement was $1.6 million or $1.5 million. For which improvement, Mayor? City Hall. Uh, so uh, $1.2 million. $1.2 million. So, um, again, you add that to two point six. that's uh, actually right now you are $3.8 million uh, for th these two areas. Now, um, somehow, I think I'm the only one here with small children, okay? I'm at the North Miami Public Library, and some of us here, you know, know the library well. But I don't understand why they're not spending money at the library, okay? I think the books, you know, I mean, Lucia, I love you. I know it's not your fault. I mean, I call you all the time and trying to get a new book, and you said we don't have any, we don't have money for it. Uh, we, how, how are we going to prepare the children for the future when our library is not even up to date? It was until recently, and I think, you know, that we actually got some funding, put some new computers in there. But I think the problem is because some of these politicians probably never been to the North Miami Public Library to see what's happening there. I'm there. It, right now, one of my children is being tutored at the North Miami Public Library. I mean, during the election, we had senators we had we presented it from president obama uh, that were here we have uh, um you know um 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 what's that young man that was here he's a big actor you know he was here encouraging people to stay on the line and vote i mean it's it's, it's you know you cannot have all these folks coming down to the north mind public library and the place is just not presentable okay and not only just the facelift, but also the books. 
the carpet is 20 years old. I don't, I don't need anybody that got the house, you know, to have a carpet that is 20 years old. Uh, the roof, you know, I mean, you, you look at the tiles, you know, I mean. So, to me, if we're not repairing, you know, what matters most, then you, we really have a problem. And I think, you know, the politicians probably are not getting it. Maybe they're not there. Maybe they don't have small children. I'm at the library. Um, Stephanie, oh, every so often I call there to get a book. The book is not there or the books that we got is 20 years old. Um, so I think the request was about $250,000 and I think we probably need more about half a million dollars to get this library up to date. But what do I know? I'm not the politician and, and the politician probably know better than I do. Um, so I'm going to leave it up to the politician. I got to I got to live here. So uh, public hearing is open. I'm going to turn the meeting to the vice mayor. Um, I got to get out of here so the politician will make the decision on what they need to do. We have about 800 people that are waiting to get the houses repaired. Yes. And rather than doing that, we take 15 million dollars, put it on the side to do whatever. Okay, that is uncalled for. And, and I think the reason why I a lot of the politicians <laughs> have not spent money there is because they have never been out there to see exactly what's happening in these people's homes. That's so wrong, Mr. Mayor, but since you're okay. being Oscar so Vista, baby. Okay. Oh, yeah, Oscar Estela Vista, baby. We've probably been to the wrong home in the city of North Miami. So I'm going to turn it over to you guys, the Vice Mayor. You could take that over. And <laughs> you guys have a very good night. Uh, public hearing is now open on tab N. Any chance, Mr. Mayor, you want to tell us where you're going? Oh, that's a no. Okay, I tried. Is that your business? Um, just guys, I'm sorry. Hello, hello, hello. I don't know if you guys remember the last time that we um, wanted to discuss this item. I did not have a chance to speak. And tonight I have the gavel, so I'll probably be the only one who will be speaking on that item. Yeah, and we want to get out early. So we're not going anywhere for hours, y'all. Uh -uh, no, uh -uh, we're gonna uh -uh, be out of here in 15 no, minutes. No, 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 Good evening, uh, Madam Vice Mayor and uh, Councilman. Uh, my name is Fred Stock, and I'm the Executive Director of Jewish Community Services of South Florida. We are a social service agency literally across the street um, from the City Hall here. We have been in this community for since 1993 in that particular building, and we have been providing a range of social services to the residents of Dade County for over the last 50 years. We're an agency that's funded by Dade County, by the state of Florida, by United Way, um, by the Children's Trust, and other state and federal programs to provide a range of services. And I'm specifically speaking to the $2.5 million. I know there has been some discussion, I, I've been made aware, as to how these funds should be spent and hopefully for the benefit of the folks who live here in the city of North Miami. So I would ask that you agree in some way to allocate some of these funds or a portion of these funds to provide social services to the folks that are living in this community. Um, I brought with me five different proposals for funding for services that would directly benefit residents who live here in the city of North Miami there is a particular one which I would spend a moment speaking on, which relates to employment. Everyone understands that we're in a very difficult situation when it comes to employment. The employment numbers in Dade County are still well over the averages for both the state of Florida and the national averages. Um, Jewish Community Services runs an employment program that is funded by the state of Florida to provide employment related services to get people jobs but that particular program is limited due to the to the to the folks that we can admit into that service they have to meet certain state requirements we would exp we would propose to expand those services to 
encompass more people who live in North Miami and we would provide a set of services that would help folks to find jobs that would be referred through the city. The cost of running that program would well, be the hiring of a staff person to run that program, to be the jobs developer, to work with folks, to develop their resumes, to give them interviewing skills, and to make them employee employment ready. The cost of that would be hiring one staff person. That cost would be approximately $57,000. And of course, we have detailed budgets that would back this up. We are a recipient of funds from the city of North Miami right now. We run a supported employment program that North Miami, the city of North Miami partially funds. Like I said, we have been in this community for many, many years. We've been a mainstay of this community in terms of the social service fabric, and we'd like to be of more service. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Lucy Tonjou, 12865 West Dixie Highway. Um, Madam Vice Mayor, Council, um, I think the mayor has a point. Two things in uh, uh, a city that makes uh, its uh, resident looks good is his museum, restaurants, and of course the library as well. And uh, most of all, who most of us are taking um, pride in MOCA and I wish that uh, the same effort we are putting in promoting MOCA we would put the same as well on our library those of us who have small children who goes to the library it is very limited and sometimes we have to take the kids to either a Dade County Public Library or North Miami Beach pu pu Public Library as a matter of fact tonight I was telling uh, Lucille that yesterday I was at the North Miami Beach Library where the Haitian president was and I was thinking, oh wow, I wish we had something like that in North Miami. And um, if there's any money, not only to repair the roof, um, even sometimes um, the city have events at the library, um, the books, upgrading the computers, upgrading the books, and now there are other ways for kids to read, not only to have the physical books, you know, those, what you call it, the flat thing? <laughs> My daughter would know the name. The She's asking one for Christmas. Tablets, those tablets no yeah you know, so you know things like that the kids know I don't know I'm too old for that anyway you know something for us to be proud of and um, and the other thing is the aspect of this city on the west side if um, most of you have not been there there are some houses you can just pull your hands and grab anybody there are things in the house the windows are not there the windows are broken their roof is gone and we are being told that there is no money to fix these people's house when we're spending money elsewhere. And I, I, I truly believe that um, um, if you are um, elected official by the citizens of the city of North Miami, we should care for the citizens. And if there's any money to be spent, it should be spent in valuable things and things that people will remember you for doing. Yep. For example, the library, those houses where people are sleeping and they have to put, a, to put a bucket when it's raining because rain is going down. I mean, it's, it's just not right and it's not fair. So if the money is there, instead of keeping it or sitting on it, let's use it for something that is useful. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> I live in uh, 1675 Northeast, 142nd. Your name, um, please. When I moved there. Can you, um, can you state your name for the record? Karen Munder. Thank you. C-A-R-Y-N-E. And basically, when we moved there, there's a fence behind our uh, back alley. She already said the address. Excuse me? It's on the record. Go ahead. The address was 1675 Northeast 142nd Street. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. And since I've mo moved there, I have four degrees and I can't find a job, so I've been cleaning up that neighborhood the best I can. I've painted houses for free. I've done gardens. I've uh, clean, totally cleaned out that alley. Fixed fences, power washed, you named it. I have not been lazy. And um, all we're asking is to get that damn fence replaced. Because it is, if anybody would drive down that alley, it's disgusting. It's, and since I've been doing the work that I've been doing in that neighborhood, everybody's kind of come together and started joining and helping each other out. Some people who can't pay houses were painting. There's about 
15 houses on that block now that have been landscaped by uh, companies. And I'm just saying that the neighborhood is getting a lot better. And we just want a little bit of help with this god awful fence that separates uh, the back of our home. Thank you. I'm not sure how to do this. Is I supposed to that? No. That's it. Yeah, good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Good evening. 1990 Northeast 118th Road, Esther Blinn. I'm here on behalf of the San Susi Homeowners Association with regard to their recommendations for spending of the $2.5 million that I believe Mr. Marcellus put on the agenda, agenda for this evening. Uh, for one, uh, there was a lot of support for a library renovation in the amount of $600,000. There was also a fervent request that you hire at least two experienced grant writers with a good track record to grow the money and pay them uh, what you would pay, an experienced grant writer, and then do a contract so that they get a benefit from uh, achieving uh, or getting the grant funded for our city, <coughs> which is a typical way to augment the income of the grant writers. That was at, at between $100,000 and $150,000 for a grant writer with a track record of getting lots and lots of grants. There were some other uh, issues. One was if there is a shortfall <coughs> for the Senior Citizens Foundation that the Biscayne Landing money help make up for that because uh, they would be then short feeding uh, the senior citizens that are normally received meals on wheels. Uh, there is uh, there was a lot of interest in park improvement programs specifically the Basadi Park and the park near the uh, Broad Causeway in, uh, in that area and there are grant monies available for that under the Playful City USA Kaboom program that uh, one of your councilmen has been reiterating for years uh, regarding the fact that we're now a Playful <coughs> City, we're now eligible for all of those grants. Additionally, the San Susi residents wanted more foliage and flowers. There is a program called American Bloom that uh, Councilman Blinn also introduced to city staff to look into and that requires a minimal amount of funding and involves uh, students, schools, and citizens planting flowers. Uh, and there are cities of our size and larger cities that have applied for and received grants and also subsidies from the private sector who may be interested in having a, a garden named after them or whatever. So those were the issues. Additionally, uh, they wanted some improvements. Uh, there were s there's mixed recommendations regarding a, a sidewalk on Canal Drive in the San Susi area and I know that the Keystone Point homeowners were interested in park improvements as well. But I don't speak for them. So that's it. Thank you, Madam. Um, Rick Bacchino, um, uh, 135 Street and uh, 20, 2533 Northeast. The uh, I'd like to see the voting reissued, uh, revisited for lining up with the county. So we don't spend all that money doing off voting, off time. I understand we're doing it in May again, and that will be away from Dade County voting. If we package it with Dade County voting, we will then be able to do it for a lot cheaper, right? Yes, I believe so. Anyway, okay. And then the other thing is the, the money that we have, I'd like to see that lock turned into five pieces and locked down and use one portion, one cut per year. So it doesn't all disappear within uh, one year, which is probably what will happen otherwise if we don't lock it down and divide it. 
Are you referring to the point five million dollars we're discussing now, or something else? The whole, the twelve point five, the seventeen point five, whatever. Right now, we're talking about the two point five million. All right. Um, well, two point five of the twelve point five, right? No, that, that to me, it should be locked down because we're not going to get anything for five years. To me, it should be divided over five years, and then use one fifth per year. Okay. okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Good evening. Annie Montgomery, 2082 Laurel Lane. I believe we're on tab N. The discussion's on tab N, is that correct? Yes. Okay, I think we have a very able city manager. And <coughs> tab N says that the purchase police vehicles and repair, repair improvements of City Hall and our city library. All those three items are included. I don't know where Mr. Pierre was coming from, our, our mayor. He went on about this library. There is money going to be used for the library. This is up to our city manager to designate how many dollars goes to each item. I, we all believe the item needs improve, the library needs improvements, so take some of that funds for the library. We don't give it all to the police department for the vehicles. And the improvements in City Hall, put some money into that. So I don't know where our mayor thought that uh, we weren't going to improve City Hall or the city library. So I think it's up to our city manager, which is very able and capable of doing. Thank you. Kennedy, 776 Northeast 125th Street. I, too, would like to see some of that money spent on infrastructure repairs and beautification of the city. There's only so much money, $2.5 million. Either you're going to build a new library or, or, or we're just going to band it approach to it. That, that, that place is really in, in, in pretty rough shape over there. And either we're going to either float a bond issue, do something with it, start from scratch. I, I've been in the city going on 40 years. And I can never remember that the staff over there is great. The books are dated. Uh, the place you walk in there, there's like mildew. Either we're going to start from scratch, knock it down, throw the bond issue, and do something great, but don't do a band-aid approach to it because you, you, you just you, you're, you, it's going to be more of the same. I like to see some of that money spent on you know, at the end of the Arch Creek Canal, put a geyser over there, a fountain, beautification. That's here forever. 125th Terrace. Absolutely decrepit over there. I'd like to see the money put put into that curb and gutter beautification, something that's going to last. The police, if the police department needs vehicles, by God, we better spend some of that money on those vehicles. You know, I, I when I call nine eleven or I call eight nine one eight one one, when I want to make sure the officers get there and get there safely. So if they need the cars, let's let's take care of them. And also, I do agree. Like, okay, two point five this year. Don't spend it all at one shot. Let, let's see if we can get an, uh, some return on that money. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Vice Mayor, maybe of the Council, Jacques Despinos, 95 Nordis 131 Street. During the first negotiation with the Biscayne Landing, and I believe uh, Michael were there and um, Karen and um, Scott and Marie, there was a strong recommendation for refurbishing the library. And by the same token, we did ask the Biscayne Landing to give us a unit per unit. That was part of the first contract. So the discussion was clear then to make sure the people on this side get a piece of the action because that was the money. That was a bond money issue and to get to where we are today. But the first deal fell. We all know with the, 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 the market 
business, you know, housing business is going, was down, and uh, there was no money. Now, again, this Canadian come back for a second bite, piece of the apple. We have some money. I think we should have no discussion to refurbishing the library. That was a part of the deal. Every one of us was there. I was there. We all agreed the library, we must do something about it. If we cannot tear it down, you know, for a brand new one, but at least, like the chief say, put some decent money. Because I was there yesterday, also at uh, not Miami Beach Library. You know, it makes us feel ashamed. And I will really appreciate it to remove all the poverty of it and do, do the right thing. The library. Housing, the mayor talking about some house need, need you know, some uh, repair. 2.5, I don't know how much we can do. But we also understand those houses still is right here in our city. I don't believe we can repair all of them in one time. Somewhere, somehow, we go and come into a program and see maybe we can take some and do some, you know, it's a matter of public safety. The police, some of the cars get to go. Some of them get to go. And we need them for our own protection. So by the same token, we're talking about 2.5 million. Maybe for Jacques, Jacques Despinos, 2.5 million is a lot of money. But we don't have about the city business. 2.5 million is a drop in the bucket. So, you spend it wisely. Do the right thing. People are watching. It's about time we do the right thing here in this building. But bear in mind, the library have the priority. Because that was a part of the deal before, and I believe it still remains. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I guess this is it. Hi everyone, I'm Kathy Hagar, Tunian PTA President for the fourth year at Morning Senior High and prior to that I was a PTA President at David Lawrence for three years. I'm coming to you as uh, not only a resident but as a member of the uh, North Miami Quality Education Advisory Board and I'm asking you also to give consideration to doing the right thing by our children in North Miami. Uh, we have 15 schools and 15,100 children K through 12 in our community. The principals met on a couple of different occasions and um, looked at priorities for them. Literacy was a huge priority for them and they think that they can accomplish that with some additional funds through the accelerated reader, uh, mobile iPad carts, etc. So I hope you'll agree with me that education can be the great equalizer in our community. A better educated uh, children will bring more, more um, we'll, pro we'll help our community prosper more. Um, what we're asking and what we would like to put through the process once you have a process to find is that you give consideration to making an investment of $8 in each one of these children um, here in our own community. Um, totals $121,000 I think. And um, when the process opens up we'll come back and do this formally. But if you can do the right thing by our children It'll be great for our community. So thank you. Thank you so much. Now citizen forum is closed. Councilor Masterlis, I'm sure this is your item. Yeah. Um, Mr. Johnson, I have some questions for you, or probably the housing director. Before I make my recommendations regarding, mainly regarding the housing repair program. Why we have that long waiting list? Uh, through Vice Mayor uh, <coughs> Councilman, uh, I will have uh, our Community <coughs> Planning and Development Director, uh, Ms. Calloway, come up and she can go into more details. Thank you, Mr. Question. Manager. Maxine Calloway, Community Planning and Development. It represents a great need in the community, but we have limited funds, which is why we have a great list, a long list. Ms. Maxim, how long did it take you to process someone under this program? 
uh, just an application processing can take anywhere from a month to two months just to process the application. Do we have any money right now on this program? Yes, we do. Like how much right like that? We have approximately $600,000 for this fiscal year, which is budgeted to do approximately 25 to 30 properties. Okay. But how long that, let's say that, when we had the money, we have a lot of money on that program. How, how many houses did you process within a year period? Approximately 50 properties. You see, more or less in a year period, in a year, we only process 50 houses. 50, yes. 50. Let's say this thing. What if I allocated some money, I allocate some money for the housing tonight? It is going to be a new program or we're going to continue with the old, the same program that you have right now? Uh, based on my discussion with the city manager, I made a recommendation that the city can tailor and structure a program different from what we have, which is funded by the federal government. The time frame, the two months, is really because we have a third-party verification process that we have to comply with. So when an applicant makes an application, the information that's in the application has to be verified by a third party, and it takes a while. So if the city were to allocate some funds from general fund, then you would have the opportunity and the liberty to structure a program that is far more flexible. You can do a formal affidavit program where the applicant would have to verify that their information is correct, and they would do an affidavit, notarize it, and that can expedite the process. We would not need to do a third party verification. So the council has a discretion to structure the program however you see fit since it's not funded by federal funds. So in other words, we consider that's going to be a new program, not the old one that you have right now under the federal government. That will be the city program? Pro that's what you might call it? Absolutely, councilman, provided that's, that's at the discretion of the council, yes. Okay. Mr. Johnson, since it's going to be a new program and... I really want you to put a guideline on that program. And I'm going to allocate some money for the housing tonight. Before I make that recommendations, really, I want to please be fair, transparent, streamline the process. And uh, I maximize every single penny on that money that I'm going to allocate this program, please. And I want you to bring it back to the council for approval. And by saying that, I want to allocate one million dollars for the housing repair program. That's I want. That's one of my recommendations. One million dollars for the housing repair program. Seven hundred thousand dollars for the police cars. Three thousand. Three hundred thousand. For the library, three hundred thousand for the city hall, and two hundred thousand for the social organizations. Let's go back again on the housing program. Upon completions of that housing program, I think we might consider to doing in phases. And I, I may call this phase phase one, for example. The one million dollars we're going to allocate for this phase one, open completions of that program. I just want you to come to the, to the council with a report, with a detailed report, and how well you perform, and how many houses that we will be able to fix with that one million dollars. If by the end of this program, after the evaluations of it, if there is any need for an additional fund for probably a second phase, it is needed, and I think I will be able to recommend some extra money for that second phase. But for now, my recommendations are as follows. $1 million for the housing repair program, $700,000 for the police cars, $300,000 for the library, you done? $300,000 for the city hall, and $200,000 for the social services. 
and the social services also i just want you to be fair and transparent and do a streamline on that for me also this is this is my recommendations for tonight thank you mr blend madam vice mayor how would you Sir. like us to proceed um as we get these recommendations, do you want to motion and second and vote on the recommendations? Or do you want to do it all at once? No, I'm just, end? no, I don't want to be selfish. I just want to hear everybody just go and give their recommendations. Okay. And then we'll summarize it and discuss about it. Then okay. we'll come to a conclusion. Hopefully before midnight tonight. <laughs> Mr. Blaine? Hey, thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, this is discussion tonight. I don't believe we're voting on this. But my priority is our own house, in which is City Hall. It needs to be upgraded in every aspect of it. I would like to allocate $750,000 to upgrade the City Hall. $750,000 for police vehicles, or all vehicles in the city, which is absolutely necessary as, a, as, a, as an asset to the city to, to keep it going, <coughs> and absolutely necessary. 500000 to the library which I think would be adequate to bring it up to date. That leaves another 500000 remaining. Now, I do have two important aspects of the city which I'd like to discuss with you. One is the Senior Citizens Foundation, which is short $186,000. I'd like to allocate 150000 to them. And the other one is a program that someone just brought up. It's called the Accelerated Reading Program for City Schools, which includes computers, and a program to encourage students to check out books from the library and to follow up their reading on online basis assessment. And there's a program that supports this called STAR, which follows through and makes sure they, they do the work. It's a component of the accelerated school program, provides information assessing the students' progress. That requires about $100,000. That still leaves money remaining, which we can discuss at some future date. But it takes care of basically all the programs which I am interested in, and I hope other members of the City Council What's concur the total? with me. What's the total for Mr. Blend? Um, anybody keep count? 750 for the City Hall. I heard the list. I just want to hear a total from the 2.5 million. Is it add up to 2.5 million? Uh, Councilwoman, if I may, it, it does not. It, it adds up to about. Uh, 2.2 million, okay. and he indicated that the yeah. remainder would be discussed yeah. at a later okay. time. That leads to other considerations which are important in the city, including housing. But we can't, it's 800 houses at 20,000 apiece. We don't have $16 million even to start that program. Uh, we can start it at some future date. The city needs the money it has in reserve because I expect, according to the city manager, they have a deficit for the next three to five years until Biscayne Landing really comes online and starts paying its full benefits to the city. But the programs I'm suggesting, and that's the Senior Citizens Program, which feeds senior citizens, is short $186,000 basically from a county. And I don't think they're going to get it back. And, and that's feeding senior citizens, an important priority in the city. And the second important priority is reading. The graduation rate in this city is dismal. And one of the problems is no one is really reading well enough in elementary and junior high and high school. This program will accelerate that. I think it's an excellent program. It covers all the schools in North Miami and gives special emphasis to three other schools that are very important. North Miami Senior High School, North Miami Middle School and Alonzo Morning Senior High School. They'll get 30 unit iPads, learning labs, and Mac Pro monitors. That is something which is just as important or more important than having a house that maybe a roof can leak, you can correct that. But you can't correct the reading problems, someone's going to have a problem for the rest of their life. If you can't feed an elderly person, they could very well die. That takes priority as far as I'm concerned. So that's what I am suggesting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blaine. Mr. Scott? Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Vice Mayor. <laughs> uh, there we go. Um, first question is for staff. Mr. Manager, we had a conversation on the phone a little bit earlier today, and you alluded to knowing that the mayor was going to leave this evening. If he's traveling on personal business, it is none of my business, but since it was dramatic and unexpected, he left the room tonight. 
Is he traveling on personal business or city business this evening? I have no idea. Okay. Um, if receipts are handed in for some sort of travel tonight or anything like that, I'd be interested in knowing simply because he wouldn't even tell us why he was leaving. You know, he, he made a big deal about the politicians not caring about the people who live in poor housing or the people that have problems in the city. He alluded that some of us don't even know what's going on at our library. Well, if he cared so much about those individuals, why is his seat empty tonight? Um, I on really feel unloved. I'm on here and you got worried right. about the mayor? What is this? I, I, it was just very <laughs> curious that he opened up with a tirade and then left and wouldn't tell us where he was going. So I, I, I'm stunned <laughs> that when a vote of this magnitude is coming forward, he's not in the room. So are uh, you making a motion to... Um, I just had a question. To move since the the, this item for the next council meeting, I yeah, second. What's your address? What's well, on the? Here's here's what I'm. Uh, there are so many great projects that have already been mentioned. Some that came from the audience, the, the the plea from the quality education board. I've got a long list of things here. Some provided by staff. Improvements at Kiwanis Park. Uh, improvements in the San Susi Alley. Uh, improvements at Mocha, the Executive Manor's wall sidewalk repairs e citizens have been emailing me about parks we've not even as a city had any type of official public town hall where people can come we've not made any type of list we've well, well you've made some list. i won't say we haven't made any type of list but you follow what i'm saying we're so disjointed right now and if we just throw money at the, at, at a few pr and i agree housing is a huge issue in this city by the way do we have any realtors that are still assisting us in finding people for these properties? As the program develops and the funding comes here, yes. If we've got a huge waiting list, we should tell those realtors hasta la vista because if we've got people already, I mean, 800 people on the waiting list, to me, that's a significant number. If we could put all 800 in a house or fix all 800 homes, we don't have any need for any realtors to be on the side advising us. I, I the realtors, to, uh, through the mayor, councilman, the realtors are only there as as needed. So, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, already have yeah, I'll summarize. I'll summarize. I swear. I'll summarize. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> We've got so many dire needs in this city, and we can spend the 2.5 million like that and not touch on any of or many of them. We could spend the whole 17 and a half million. I think we should, I, 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 I love what the councilman did a month or so ago when he put the bulk of it in reserves because we're not gonna see any more money for a few years. But even if we're just gonna spend the two and a half million, I think it's only fair that we have some, some solid discussions with facts and figures and projects in front of us. Nobody on staff has ever asked me for my wish list. I'd be glad to provide it to you. Um, get some of that stuff out there let it be digested, publicly debated, and then let people come forward. There are only maybe 30 people in the room tonight. I'm not counting staff, no offense. Um, but I swear if people realized that we were giving away two and a half million dollars tonight, there would be a packed house. And I just don't want to have people wake up in the morning and go, but you, you gave it away already? What, what happened? So my, my ask is that we, we, we table this for a couple of weeks or more and that you solicit some input from staff, from council, solicit some info, input from the public, and then with like this maybe massive wish list of all these projects, come back and then we can pick and choose those things we think we can afford to do right now. Are you now. making a motion, Councilman? Sure, I'll motion to continue this till uh, January meeting. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The item passed. For, um, what, January? January, t the second okay. meeting in January. Okay. Because I don't want people trying to solicit opinions over the winter holidays. That wouldn't be fair. And, okay. and will you please ask, schedule a town hall? What is no. it, Mr. City Manager? Have a town hall have? meeting on it. I, I, I'm not clear, Vice Mayor. Schedule. Uh, We're tabling the discussion. We, uh, no, we move to um, for the item to the next council meeting. I, I'll restate my motion, to be clear, if I might. Sure. I motion that we move this agenda item, item to and Tuesday, January the 29th. I second And the, the ensuing item. days, sometime after the holiday, we hold at least one public town hall meeting to solicit input and ask for council input as well as to 
things we might do with the money. And uh, can, can, I, can I say something, please? The $25 million, that's the money we already discussed. And uh, I think everyone in the city probably aware of this money and how we're going to spend it. We know the money is going to spend in police cars, libraries, and city hall, and our housing. This is the mainly where the money we know the money is going to be spent. Either we do it now or we take a month or three months from now. That's mainly where the money is going to spend. But what about parks? What about MOCA? I think this item, you, you just sta restated your motion just to uh, clarify it for the city manager. This item I already voted on and it's time to move on to Citizens Forum. Yeah, and I think all on. of us voted on it. Citizens Forum is now when open. When, when, when we're going to put it, what meeting we're going to put it on? I think um, my motion was for January For January 29th. 29th. Just, to, just to take is it away it, a little bit from the Or whenever Christmas the next meeting. Oh, the second meeting. Well, our next meeting is the 20, excuse me, January 8th. So I restate. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the calendar wrong. I missed New Year's Day. Our next meeting is January 8th. Only a week after New Year's Day. It that means that to do with the last so meeting on January 22nd. January the 22nd so that we just move it a little bit further from the holidays and everybody can have their break and we don't have to worry about town halls during Christmas week or something like that. Beautiful. Citizen Forum is now open. Good evening, Beverly Hilton, 12495 Northwest 6th Avenue. Good evening, Vice Mayor. Good evening. Good evening. And Council. I'm here this evening because we had a, a, um, a block party scheduled for this Saturday. We've been doing, we've been holding this block party since 2005. We blocked the street with the showmobile. It's a free event. I was never asked to, the officers are normally there. I was never asked to hire um, off-duty officers. but. Vice Mayor, the, the city manager, insisted. And because of that, we have to cancel. His recommendation is that I hire four off-duty officers plus a supervisor. Now, uh, Councilman Scott, you guys have been to the block party. We don't, have, we don't ever have any needs for the police officers. You've been there. We never, we never had a need for the police officers. W this is a free event, and we don't have the funds to pay off-duty officers. I asked the manager to put it on the thing, and he refused to do so. So on be because of this, resident who is watching, the block party is canceled, thanks to the city manager. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Selston. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Joe Celestine, 13500 Northeast Third Court. I just wanted to clarify something since the Miami Held is here and she's taking notes. Uh, earlier, Councilman Galvin mentioned uh, the fact that uh, if the city of North Miami is giving away $2.5 million, there will be a large number of people uh, here to get a part of that money. I will be one of those folks if the city were given $2.5 million. I just want to make clear that the record is clear. The city, from what I understand from the current proposal, there is no plan to give away $2.5 million. The allocation of that money, from what I understand from many of you up there, it is set aside or it's been proposed for city business that includes the repair of city hall. Uh, Councilman Blend wanted to allocate $750,000 for the repair of the city hall. That cannot be implied as a giveaway. That is the, the, gov the business of the government. If there's a need to repair city hall, that money would have to come out of the general funds or wherever the city manager will find it. So therefore, I don't consider that type of uh, appropriation uh, as a giveaway. I, I'm, I'm saying that is because uh, the reputation of this council has been damaged 
out there and uh, if that goes out by saying that North Miami is prepared to give away 2.5 million folks you guys need to come to City Hall mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we've clarified that there's no such a thing that's been proposed tonight I understand that there is money uh, 2.5 million dollars and there is a proposal currently to allocate the money for the purpose of managing city business which has nothing to do with giveaway I know there's also a proposal to give away 200,000 but the purchasing of the police cars the repair of City Hall the library all of those major component of the amount that's been of the proposal has nothing to do with giveaway so I just wanted to clarify that so we don't appear to look like the city that's doing the giveaway and folks that are coming here thinking that there is something there will be an allocation of 2.5 for the record Councilman Galvin I, I, I just want you to elaborate on that if you please Oh sure. Now, when I say giveaway, um, oh, can sorry, we, can sorry. We wait after the thank you. After, after everyone is done, then we'll, we'll I am discuss done. it. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anybody yeah. else? <coughs> uh, Kennedy, seven seven six Northeast One Twenty Fifth Street. Uh, what I like to talk tonight about is the the charter. We have a meeting coming up on uh, I think January the fourteenth, and I, I I had a discussion just recently with the uh, city attorney. And one of the concerns uh, that was brought up at the last city council meeting about the, the work that we've done on the charter was the mayor and council pay and the pay raises. And I, I, I thought I did not want to see that go into the charter. I, I see where the county is still making $6,000 a year since 1950 something or other, and they can never get a raise. I firmly believe that you people deserve to be paid and you deserve a raise every so often. And I would like to see a couple of sample ordinances uh, composed uh, for that meeting on January 14th, and possibly uh, in that or ordinance we write up, uh, we use the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, or we could use a couple of other indexes, uh, uh, in the Inflationary Index or something like that. And every two years, the council would get a raise based upon the average of the CPI for those two years. And we would need a supermajority of four out of five to vote on that. I think that would put a lot of people to rest in the city knowing that we have this ordinance in place. One of the things that I think we all, all agree collectively is we look at what happened in California a couple of years ago where the council and the uh, staff, the city manager voted themselves raises and they were making some outlandish amount of money, $200,000 a year, $300,000 a year. Also, I mean, that's absolutely preposterous and I hope that would never happen here. But I think if we put some kind of a sample ordinance together using the CPI or one of the other indexes and have that for the January meeting, just, just a sample, just to bring it up, and, and, and look at that, that would put a lot of attention on the city charter to rest and we could possibly pass this I, I I really do you know the charter is the constitution of the city and I, and I refer back to our constitution the United States Constitution you don't see anything in there about salaries and so forth and so on for the president and the Congress you see age in there but no, nothing else to put all this minutia back into the Charter defeats the purpose of having the Charter Review Board. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, we can put that in there, but why do it? We're just chasing our tail. So that's why I say let's get a couple of proposed ordinances just for discussion purposes on the January 14th meeting, okay, using various indexes. You get a raise automatically every two years. Uh, and, and, and I think this is going to kind of calm the waters. Now, it's not going to please all of the people all of the time, but I firmly believe that you guys deserve to be paid and you should be keeping up with the inflationary spiral or the CPI. I mean, no, it's a good you know, I, I, I heard that, uh, you know, uh, you, you're volunteers. Well, I like to volunteer too, but I like to see people get paid for the services that they're doing. And you get qualified people up here that, you know, they're going to make a few extra bucks for the time that they're putting in here. You deserve what you're getting, and, and I don't have a problem with that, but I think uh, a, a small adjustment every couple of years is appropriate. And if we do it in an ordinance, I think that's going to eliminate a lot of... Uh, 
anxiety to s sort of uh, Thank you, Chief. Okay, thank you. Madam Blinn? Esther Blinn, 1990, Northeast 118th Road. Uh, I think there were a number of uh, uh, concerns, as uh, a former chief each mentioned, about salaries. There are also a number of concerns about allocations of money for housing. Uh, rehabbing, there are 800 homes, as I understand it, in distress in the city. There are at least 800 to 1,000 homes in foreclosure. Uh, there are grants that came to the CRA for rehabbing of homes, purchase of homes, giving out of mortgages. I think we need to look at that and look at that as a source of funding. That's what the uh, CRA uh, job is. And I think we should look at where that money is. Has it grown? Have we uh, given out mortgages? Have we made money out of the money that was brought into the city by Councilman Despinos and Councilman Blinn? That was two point, I keep saying 2.7, but apparently it was 2.8 million dollars in a federal grant. I think, again, I re-emphasize the necessity, if you need to hire people to grow the money that we have, hire grant writers. I mean, it makes only s common sense that you hire someone to get more money and use the money that we have from Biscayne Landings to grow instead of to just use it and then it's gone. Even the 2.5 million should include grant writers and uh, all avenues available to grow money should be used so that we have the 2.5 million that Councilman uh, Marcellus proposed as a as a um, spending point and saving the rest and using most of that uh, keeping most of that in reserve is a wonderful idea but if we make Councilman Marcellus's 2.5 million proposal 5 million or 8 million at the end of several years or even within a year that would be a greater thing and a permanent thing, which is what he had proposed when he made his initial proposal, to make it permanent so that the council is remembered for something special. So I reiterate my plea from the San Susi homeowners and myself to look at the uh, advantages of grants. Thank you. Anybody else? Good evening, happy holidays. Happy um, <laughs> wish I wasn't here for this occasion. William Prevatel, uh, 11950 North Bay Shore Drive. Um, here on behalf of myself, uh, our family business, the 40 or 50 residents of Mid Bay Club Apartments, uh, the 100 or 200 so neighbors in our area. We have a situation where um, something that is not broken the city is making an attempt to fix uh, we have a rental building where that was built in 1964 and across from the building uh, somewhere during the uh, years after 1964 um, a median was put in place and curbing was put in place so therefore there's no parking in front of the building we have 27 units 26 spots and over the years for three decades now the lot across the street, which was purchased and had common ownership, which was maintained, paid tax, landscaped, and taken care of, has been used for overflow parking for the Mid Bay Club apartments. This has been fine for three decades. Um, half a year ago or so, a number of months ago, someone decided to say, hey, there shouldn't be parking there. Uh, we've tried to look into it. We don't know if that complaint was because it wasn't paved, it, because there were cars there, because there might have been a truck there. We don't know. But they are trying to, now all of a sudden we've gotten a citation saying you cannot park on this lot that's been used uh, so very long. And uh, it's then facilitated until this gets resolved that cars, the few cars that use the lot, then go onto the street and are legally parked therefore inconveniencing the neighborhood. Uh, I have a copy of letter. I'd like to read off some of the reasons why we'd like to have this 
issue go away, we'd like to uh, have this grandfathered in that the lot be continued uh, as it has been used for the last three decades. If I may just, these are some of the reasons. Uh, the location has been used in the configuration that currently exists to accommodate overflow parking for the Midbay Club apartments and for special events of the neighborhood at no charge for decades. The location has been used over the years without owner objection by the North Miami Police Department, North Miami Utility Division, Miami Dade Fire and Rescue, FPL, and others, including contractors of the neighborhood, often with heavy equipment. Uh, since being built in 1964, uh, North Bayshore Drive has, has had stream, street side parking eliminated due to a planted median and curbs. Four, the off-street off location is safer than having multiple vehicles parked alongside streets of the neighborhood. Five, the grass and gravel surface is used recreationally by residents and dogs when not fully occupied by vehicles. The grass gravel surface does not complicate flooding and drainage concerns for the neighborhood. The grass gravel surface is friendly, green friendly with less noise, less heat retention, and less fossil fuel paving. The owners of Mid Bay Club Apartments have also owned, paid taxes, and regularly maintained the planted parcel. The vacant R1 parcel is not tied to the legal entity and mortgage in place of the Mid Bay Club R5 parcel, so therefore there's no unity of title. 10, the owners monitor and limit the number of vehicles to the Mid Bay Club residents and others by request. That includes when Mallorca Tower lost their parking lot to Hurricane Wilma and 30 cars were parked there uh, for over a month period. This includes when the synagogue has events and uh, year after year, even without asking permission, has parked up to 40 cars on the lot. And we've never, uh, we've never objected. Uh, many of these vehicles have, uh, and the agencies have parked there without any request, but we've never objected and uh, I've always tried to accommodate. Uh, continued usage as it favors the neighborhood by reducing street side parking while still being park-like. Police actions, conflicts, and complications are all mitigated when the parcel continues its present usage, of which we've had a number of complications of late because this car is then on the street and there's interpretations about their parking. Uh, recent tickets of vehicles parked street side are claimed to have been issued with selective discrimination. 15. The City of North Miami Development Standards, Article 5, Section 51401G, adopted 28 April 2009, states gravel and concrete strip driveways existing at the time of adoption of these LDRs for single-family dwellings shall be allowed to remain in perpetuity, provided that they are properly maintained. And 16, a letter issued 28 April 2003 from the City of North Miami to the Council of the Purchasers, Our Bank, states that, the legal non-conforming use of the property may be continued so long as the structures are not enlarged or altered in a way which increases their non-conformity. There are no city proceedings underway which would affect this property. And I'll, I'll hand over a copy of this, if I may, uh, and it includes the, the letter from 2003, uh, a section of the statutes below. Uh, includes some additional correspondence to the uh, to the city and to the police department, and you know we would really like this resolved. It's been a major inconvenience to uh, our neighborhood. Uh, it is an unsafe situation, even though it's legal to park on the streets. And in terms of the discrimination of parking, we had uh, even though we were waiting for it to be resolved, even though we had assurances from the police that there would be no ticketing, three guests on uh, this is a number of weeks ago now. It just keeps dragging on. Uh, maybe a month ago, uh, three cars were ticketed. And when we pointed out that, oh, they're ticketed because there's, there are wheels 18 inches onto the pavement. One car had no wheels on the pavement, and but all three in a row were, another one had maybe six or 12 inches on the pavement. It was pointed out that not more than two blocks away, if you took the same standards, there were 18 violations. As I drove over here tonight, I took the same block, there were 20 violations. I certainly don't want to go ahead and go through the entire city of North Miami and see what isn't being, um, you know, uh, that we should go out and hunt down all the illegal parking. We have something that is not broken, and that area that I said where there are 20 violations right now, they haven't done any harm. I'd like to have everybody stay the way they are. It's uh, like to live and let live. I would just like us to be able to go back and park on our lot, which is safer, better, and not disrupt the entire city. 
Uh, I'd like to see if there's some way of doing this because we've had now uh, every agency in the city involved with all their various interpretations and such. And I think our efforts to pave over everything that's been a suggestion to pave the lot, not only is it costly, but it's environmentally, you know, insensitive. We use it as recreation as well. Uh, and, you know, I think we have enough. We seem to be promoting car dealerships and sprawl. And uh, I'd like to, uh, our city to do anything it can to maintain whatever green they have, uh, wherever we have it. Uh, and I, I would like some sort of support from City Council if we could to, um, and some assurance so that our people can park on the lot again without citations. And it will actually alleviate them parking on the street at all, so there will be no complications with the police there. Thank you. If, if, you, if you allow us a, a few minutes, we will address it in a minute. Go ahead and sit down, because we have a couple of other issues before Thank you that needs to be addressed. May I, may I leave the uh, copy with you? Sure, you can give it to the city attorney. Thank you. Very much appreciated. Thank you. <coughs> John Caspinos, 95 Northeast 131 Street in North Miami. I'm listing the breakdown of uh, of the 2.5 by Councilman Marcellus. It's a library, 300,000. City Hall, three. Police, seven. Uh, home repair, one million. Social service, 200,000. When you add it, give you your, that's your 2.5. Listen to uh, Councilman Bland. Let's just look the this 200. If we go along with uh, Councilman Marcellus breakdown, they only have 200,000 for social service. When I say let's be fair, how can we want to give 100 plus thousand to one organization? I don't care which organization because there's more organization in the city who will come in on that day. We know, come to look for money. So we have to be fair across the board, uh, otherwise you will remain in trouble. Because some people will walk out here and raise question, why so and so receive so much and I, I don't receive one dollar. So be careful. Somebody raised the question, I think, of the chief about uh, the charter review board. I think in charter review board, the res residency requirement make it a joke for the city. People come in from everywhere and claim they're resident of the city. I think it's the responsibility of the clerk office and the Charter Review Board to make sure they put some teeth in this thing because it's really, it's happening many, many times. I think it is time to reinforce it. When we say the residency requirement, we mean it. Because so far, it doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. And I, I, I think that's one other thing the Charter Review Board have to be really, really sit down and, and, and make the requirement exactly what do you need to prove. You are truly a resident of this city. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Citizen Forum is now closed. Um, I know... Um, Former Mayor Sellison had questions for you, Mr. Scott. Since sure. he's not here, do you still intend to answer him? Yeah, I'll answer it. Maybe he's just outside of the room. I'll be very okay. brief. Thank you. Um, I, I was just pointing out, and I thank him for asking me to clarify. You he's can right. can take the time as your report yeah. as well, because we are in a uh, council report. Oh, cool. Okay. There we go. I'll just add this to my report. Okay. Um, when I said giveaway, obviously I was using the term perhaps a bit too loosely. Um, even if it's only $200,000 that we end up giving to social service organizations, um, I know that if s any number of them knew that we were giving away even that seemingly small amount, we would have a lot of people in the room asking for that part of the pie. Um, so I agree with uh, Mayor Celestin that if we're using it in-house for city hall improvements or police cars or anything like that, that's certainly not a giveaway. So I thank Mayor Celestin for the clarification. 
um, on my reports. We had a great menorah lighting. Uh, Councilman Blinn was there at Temple Beth Moshe this past Sunday evening, and we're having another in the Mocha Courtyard tomorrow night. So uh, please come on out to that at 6 o'clock. Uh, happy Hanukkah to everybody who's celebrating this, this next few days. Um, the lights are on on Enchanted Place, also known as 137th Terrace, just off Northeast 16th Avenue. Come on by. I don't know how many tens of thousands of lights are in the it's trees, nice, nice. Um, but there are crowds already on the street, and it'll just get a, a little bit more busy as the holiday Christmas gets here. And uh, if you have FPL never seen it before, sponsor that event? FPL doesn't so. sponsor, nor do they give us a cut on the bill. <laughs> oh, really? I thought there was a time that they said they sponsored. No, no, no. This is, I think, their 26th wow. year doing it on the street. My fifth happening to live on the street. And uh, my beautiful. electric bill was several hundred dollars last year. Wow. And that's okay. It's well, part of the for spirit. One for one month, it goes from 75 bucks to 500 bucks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but it's the, it's the street's gift to the community. Yeah. We wouldn't have it any other way. That's Every nice. house but two are participating this year, which is probably a record. So come by Enchanted Place, Northeast 137th Terrace, off Northeast 16th Avenue, and you won't believe that it's there. Um, I probably have other things I could add, but you know what? It's the holidays, and we all want to get out of here early. So uh, we won't see you again. Merry Christmas to everybody, and happy 2013. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be brief also. First, I would like to wish everyone a happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. Uh, last week I was in Boston for four days. Uh, as my wife said, I contacted the American and Bloom Flowers. We'll contact the city about planting flowers all over the city for a nominal cost. Playful City and Kaboom will, should be in discussions with you about their, their projects. It doesn't cost the city very much money. They're, they're all uh, fu funded by other organizations besides the city. Uh, the city has a lot of working assets that have to be upgraded, including the police cards and the city hall, and I consider that always a first priority if, if we ever discuss this again in January. And I'd like to make that known that that's my first priority also. So happy and Merry Christmas to all of you. This is it? Happy holidays. Happy and holidays to you. I say Merry Christmas to everyone and Happy New Year. Please stay safe and well. Thank you. That was short. City Clerk, any report? Real brief. I want to thank um, three small business owners in the city of North Miami. Annie Montgomery, thank you so much for the beautiful flowers. You dropped off a, um, you turned our office into a festive office. They were beautiful, very thoughtful. I was able to give one of the bouquets to uh, Dr. Claude, but thank you very much, and it was well appreciated. I want to thank um, Lucy Dundro and um, and um, Philip Yenime. They were kind enough to drop off cards to me, acknowledging the great work the Office of the City Clerk has done. I want to, of course, thank uh, President Obama. He sent us a card as well. Um, but granted, I wrote him a lot of checks and helped him in his campaign. <laughs> um, but, um, but I want to thank him for being thoughtful and sending us a card. Um, the second um, report, um, it, we're, we're losing one of our remarkable workers at the uh, Office of the City Clerk, former City Clerk and our current Assistant City Clerk, Alberta Patterson, was summoned by my former boss, my uh, political mom, Representative Daphne Campbell. She needed some help in the office. Daphne asked me if I can, you know, spare a remarkable employee. Um, Alberta pa um, Patterson have. Um, you know, she's, she have agreed and decided that um, it's perfectly fine to begin working with the office of Daphne Campbell beginning January 2nd. We're going to miss her dearly, but this is all a team community effort. Whenever a fellow um, elected official needs help, we, we, we would definitely do what we can to help out. And the last um, update, just a, click, a quick cl clarification. The office of the city clerk and I think the mayor and council and um, the office of the manager was invited on a conference call with Vice President Joe Biden. Um, I wasn't able to join the conference call. I asked Jackie and a couple other staff members to join for me. Now, if you have any, any residents have any requests, you want me to forward over to uh, the vice president. Spoke with him several times. He is a remarkable guy. Feel free to send me an email, but any official emails that you want to get sent over to what uh, the vice president should go through the office of the city manager, which is Mr. Johnson. So that's that completes my report, Vice Mayor, and a remarkable job taking charge. Um, thank and thank you. While, while you're in your report, can you clarify for a concern, um, this, you know, 
about the the qualification or how do you go about to confirm the residency um <coughs> There's no law set in place. There is um, particular laws, state laws, that refers to um, 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 residency requirements and documentations that um, that meets that requirement. Right now, a driver license, bills, um, 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 homestead exemption paperwork, those are things that meet the qualifications. So the charter board, you, the charter board, it isn't their job to. Um, I'm sorry, it isn't the clerk's job to try to enforce anything. The only thing we can require is that they submit the necessary paperwork and they have to submit an affidavit. If anyone lie on that affidavit or submit false paperwork, they would be subject to perjury charges and can get into a lot of trouble for um, submitting either false documents and or lying on the affidavit they must sign. But in terms of qualifying, everyone has a constitutional right to run for office if they meet the, the basic minimal requirements. I think in the, here in the state of North Miami is a one-year residency requirement and usually individuals would submit a driver license indicating that they've been, um, they lived here for over a year, sometimes bills, sometimes homestead exemption paperwork, and even sometimes lease agreements um, um, and, um, and traffic license plate information as well. So there's a lot of ways an individual can, can submit documentations proven that they live here in the city, a lot of certain, a lot of different documentations they can prove. Again, if the documentations are false or if they lie in submitting the affidavit that must be signed um, and notarized, they would be subject to perjury charges and can and can go to jail for it. So that's no you know, problem. That's what Thank it is. You. Thank Madam you. City Attorney, do you have any reports for us? Yes, I do. Uh, as you recall, we've been discussing an item. Uh, uh, with respect to a lawsuit from Christina Grant, Maria Christina Grant, who sued the city, uh, we uh, she sued the city on the basis that the city failed to allow her to transfer ICMA monies into the city pension. We were litigating the, the matter and we went to mediation and entered into a tentative settlement pursuant to your approval. A part of that settlement was to allow her to retire early beginning January 1st. And the second part is a monetary amount of approximately $48,000. So I'm looking for your approval uh, so that we can move forward and finalize the agreement uh, with the city manager and myself. I'll move approval. I second it. All, All in favor? Any discussion? Any discussion Aye. on the item? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item passed 4 Thank zero. You. That's it? That's it. Okay. Mr. City Manager, do you have any reports? Yes, good evening, Vice Mayor and Council. Um, in regards to Alhambra Heights, I just want the, you all to understand there wasn't anything from my office that prohibited a, black, a block party. I, I think it was a lack of clarity and paperwork uh, from Ms. Uh, Beverly Hilton that the staff was not really comfortable uh, in having and knowing the true mission, whether it was for uh, her daycare or whether it was for um, truly a community block party. So when we asked for follow-up documentation, we did not get that. And as you know, in the past, some of our events, we've been having people pay for off-duty and staff, so that uh, remaining inconsistent with that. So. Uh, it, the truth of the matter is, is that staff was not comf comfortable because of the lack of documentation that we received. So uh, to, to know what the true mission of that function was. Okay. In regards to Mr. Uh, Pravatel, mm -hmm. um, we, there is an issue there where things have been allowed to happen. However, um, city's rules and regulations and ordinances do not allow me to have a grandfather clause to move forward. There is a concern um, through complaints, through code enforcement, through follow-ups that there is a violation. We do not allow people to park on empty lots. Uh, some of the items that he discussed about um, allowing this paved on grass was for single families not an empty lot. Uh, also the thought of whether or not a parking lot is better than parking on grass. It, you know, one could say that parking on grass with vehicles could cause damage from oil leaks, gas leaks, etc. Uh, so therefore we have to depend on 
the land development regulations, the zoning regulations that the city has in place for a purpose. But nonetheless, we as staff uh, are trying to work with Mr. Prevotel. Uh He does own the property. Uh, he, it was his druthers not to pave it because it could be a future investment property. So it could be easily resolved by him making a parking lot, but I also understand his concern. He doesn't want to do that because later it could be utilized as something else. So we will continue to try to come up with a resolution within the parameters of our zoning and land development regulations as best we can. To, to come to a quick resolution within those parameters. I appreciate that very much. Yes, sir. Madam. Go, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Can we not we get a do. special exception in place that would allow, I mean, he owns one property and the other property. If he wants to let his tenants on property A park on his other property B, can we not just do a special exception to allow it under some condition? I don't know what that would be, but I mean, is there not some way to, if this has been happening for, I know you're waving your hand, but we can't reopen public discussion. So that's, that's probably the part. Well, I, see, I see it, but I can't. Um, I, I, I would love to just find if it was, if there are people complaining, then I think you need to have a frank conversation with Mr. Prevotel about who it is that's complaining, um, because we all have the right to face our accusers. Um, and that way, perhaps he can go to those that are complaining and have some sort of discussion. I mean, maybe they're complaining because they didn't like the paint color on the building, so now they decided to complain about this parking situation. Rather than spend an inordinate amount of your time, st city staff time, if there's per perhaps some simple fixes through, you know, conversations between the accusers and the parkers, uh, or some sort of special exception, I'd be open to that because I, I know where he's talking about. That, that's exactly what we've been attempting to do over the past several weeks. It has taken a lot of staff time, yep. but again, we do have parameters that is in writing, zoning regulations, land development uh, regulations that are, are, are really tying our hands. So we're trying to bring people together to find out what we can do. Uh, we, we've had this situation in other parts of the city. We, we've able to bring people together, people put money in, we were able to pave lots where we've had this situation at before. This one's a little bit more challenging, and staff will continue to do our best to come a to us. And there might be some ways to convert spaces to parking without actually paving. I mean, by putting down cement, gravel. pave like some gravel or something like that. That's that's less, you know, in, uh, 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 less intensive to remove if they ever do sell the lot. And, I'm just looking for. I, 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 will, I will suggest that, uh, Mr. City Manager, if you can sit down with them to see uh, within those two weeks that we out to see if you can come to a conclusion. If not, um, at the end of the month, make it an agenda item. Actually, the people that are against it or people that feel um, uncomfortable about the issue will come before and speak, and then we'll take it from there. Okay. But I, I assume that you guys will continue to work together. Yes. Okay. And um, go ahead. Uh, just, just re you know, I, I know that some of the disbursement of funds regarding city hall and police vehicles, I, ju I, I just will say that when, so that nobody's alarmed about city hall, um, you know, we do have a 40-year um, recertification process that we will go through. Um, we, we will have to minimally do whatever action that needs to take place to ensure that City Hall continues to operate, be open, be safe and sound. Uh, we will follow the same protocol uh, with police vehicles. However, we do, we will say that, that our police vehicles is a urgent issue. And, uh, you know, if it, we, we won't let police vehicles go to the point that they no longer exist. But it will take some funding. So okay. no uh, just wanted to put that out there. And as well, finally, everyone have a nice holiday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Robert, do you have a last minute let, update let, let me for us? Is that what something. you're here? No, that's uh, what I was I just invite everyone No, can you please um, go to the mic? Um, I just wanted to invite everyone in the city to come tomorrow night to the, the menorah lighting at 530. I had another issue, but um, I, I guess it's not really appropriate now. Maybe I'll, c I'll come to the next meeting or... Maybe I'll speak to you tomorrow night or something. No problem. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah.
we just had a question where this for the city vehicles that we have within for the city vehicles that within two two point eight or two point six million dollars when I read on the face uh, 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 recommendations is that one point three million dollars. What what exact figure that we have for the police cars? Well, uh, it, it's in about the one point two, one point three million dollar range. That's the correct figure. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, thank you so much for your collaboration. You really make me safe to be up here chairing the the meeting. Motion to adjourn. I just like to um, thank everyone for to attend the. Uh, um, the holiday celebration, it was very nice. A lot of people, a lot of kids showed up and received our toys. Um, again, happy Hanukkah, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and happy New Year to all of you guys. And see you next time. Motion to okay. adjourn. Meeting adjourned. Good, Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. I can, I can